message number eight in our series of ten messages entitled, what's the title of this? A-K-A that stands for also known as. That's right. For example, we come over here and we look at this gentleman right here. What's his name? His name's Joe. I call him Jose. Jose. Because Jose. Jose. Jose travels with me to Cuba. But Joe is the name that his parents gave him. It's not the names that God has given Joe. Matter of fact, in heaven, he's not going to be called Joe. We're going to talk about what he'll be referred to in heaven as later. But God, just like with Joe, has called you at least ten names. And it's these names that form our identity. These are the names that we've been studying. The principle, you see it on your outline, that forms the foundation for the whole series. My true identity is not the name given to me by my parents, but it's found in the names, plural. And there are ten that have been given to us by God. And Proverbs says a good name is more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. I'm sure a lot of us would love to have gold and silver and a lot of riches, but guess what? More important than that is understanding the good names you have because that'll bring you riches internally. That'll transform your identity the way you look at yourself in the mirror when you understand the names that God has given us. Now, so far we've studied seven of our ten names. Let's review them. Let's see if we remember some of those. The first name is what? Saint. And then we said we are also known as? child and then the third sheep or ba yeah and then there's beloved right and then the next disciple and then we said there's servant and then related to servant but distinct is the whole idea of steward that we studied last sunday now this morning we're going to look at the eighth amazing name that god has given to us and that name is ambassador so I'm Mark, but I'm also known to God as Ambassador Mark. That's amazing. So I'd like you to turn to your neighbor right now and say, hello, I'm Ambassador, and then give your first name. Just say that to someone at your table. Yeah. <laughs> Ambassador Manny. Ambassador Scott. Ambassador Dave. Kathy. I'm Carolyn. I see this. It's going on. I like it. That's helping. You're voicing your identity. You're speaking about your true identity. The identity that God has given you found in your various names. God wants you to begin seeing yourself. Talking about yourself the way He sees and talks about you. Now, what are we going to do this morning? Well, because God calls you ambassador, we're going to study three things that are true about you that, that God wants you to embrace as part of your identity. That's what we're going to do this morning. Number one is this. Because I am God's ambassador, I am God's official representative in a foreign country. Now, I'm sure that you've looked at a picture of our world from space. And if not, here's a picture of that right now. I love looking at satellite images of our planet. Because it reminds me of how God views our world. And he can obviously have a much more intimate view. Psalm 139 says he knows everything about your life up close. But God also sees the world from where he is in heaven. From God's perspective, watch this. He sees you as his ambassador on this planet in a foreign country. Now what's an ambassador? An ambassador is an, a, an official representative serving in a foreign country. For example, the United States has ambassadors serving all over the world in actually 180 foreign countries. And God, likewise, has His ambassadors all over the world in every single country. You are one of God's ambassadors serving God where He's placed you in a foreign land, in a foreign country. You say, what foreign country? The United States 
is a foreign country to you. You say, I'm a citizen of the United States. You have dual citizenship. You are a citizen of the kingdom of God. And it's very important you begin seeing yourself. If you see yourself solely as a citizen of the United States or something here on earth, you've got a long way to go to understand who you truly are in your identity. God calls you His ambassador. You are His representative in a foreign country. As a matter of fact, the Bible says in 1 Peter 2.11, there on your outlines, Dear friends, I urge you as aliens and strangers in the world. God sees you as an alien, as a stranger in this world. And some of you are looking at your neighbor going, yeah, they really look like an alien. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, that's how extreme it is. How much of an ambassador we are. This is a foreign land. This is not our home. We're just passing through. Philippians 3.20 says, but our citizenship is what? In where? It's in heaven. It's not on earth. We're just passing through. Now, what does an ambassador do? Well, an ambassador represents the king. An ambassador negotiates on behalf of the king, speaks on behalf of the king. So you see, as God sees you, he sees you as one who represents him, who negotiates on behalf of him, who speaks on behalf of him. Question, have you begun and are you beginning to see yourself as an ambassador? Now, take your Bibles and turn to 2 Corinthians, if you would. We're going to be here the whole morning. Romans, 1 and 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians. Go to 2 Corinthians. And let's see in Holy Writ, in the Word of God, our identity, our name as an ambassador in print, in the Word of God, in inspired Scripture. 2 Corinthians 5, verses 17 to 20. Let's go ahead and read this. <coughs> Paul is speaking, and, and he starts off with a verse that you've all heard before, a very familiar verse. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. So if we're in Christ, we're a Christian, we become a new person. So what becomes new when you are in Christ? Well, verse 18, all this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ, and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. And he has commanded, committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. In light of all this, we're his ambassadors. As though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. There's our identity in verse 20. We are therefore... Christ's ambassadors. That's our identity. That's one of the names that God has assigned to you. One of the names God has assigned to me. As a matter of fact, the Apostle Paul talked about his own life there in Ephesians 6.20. Paul said this, I am an ambassador in chains. It doesn't matter where you are at, you can be an ambassador. Paul was in jail when he wrote the book of Ephesians. I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare the gospel fearlessly as I could. So God calls us ambassadors. We represent him in a foreign country called planet Earth. This is how God sees us and how God wants us to see ourselves. It's a huge part of our identity as God's official representative in this foreign country. Now, watch this. Some of you, this is like, this is a brand new thought to you. You're like, I've never thought to think of myself as an official representative of Jesus Christ in a foreign country. Many of you, though, others, you've seen yourself like this for a long time. And it totally has transformed the way you see yourself, and not only the way you see yourself, but the way you live. The way you live at work, the way you live in your neighborhood, your priorities, your whole life has been, your life is predicated how you live on the basis of how you see yourself in the mirror. If I wake up and I see myself as Mark, I'm going to live like Mark. What a bummer. Seriously. But if I wake up and I see myself as ambassador, Mark, I'm going to live my life in a completely different way. And the last thing you want to do is spend all your life as a Christian looking in the mirror and only seeing you and only living yourself the way you would selfishly for your own purposes or whatever. Wow. Now, so I want some of you to speak up at your tails because some of you, God... Is, has done an amazing work in your life and you see yourself truly as God's authoritative representative in this world and you need to not 
boast about that, but you need to talk about that conviction because there's some other people at your table who are not living that, they don't see themselves that way. And I want you to talk about why you see yourself that way. So here's the question. How have you begun to see yourself as God's ambassador? Talk about that. Go for it. Okay, because I am God's ambassador, I am God's official representative in a foreign country. That's where it begins, your identity, around this theme of being an ambassador. I am God's official representative wherever I go. But it doesn't end there. It just begins there. The second is this. Because I am God's ambassador, I'm entrusted with a very specific message to give away while on earth. Yes, I'm his, I'm his ambassador in a foreign country, wherever I go. But to be that ambassador, the whole point is to be his mouthpiece, is to be his spokesperson. There's a message that I'm called to give away and give away and give away and give away and give away. Because I'm not here talking about my agenda. I'm here representing the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. You say, what is the message? Well, again, there in 2 Corinthians 5, we read the scripture, but let's read it again because I want you to see there's a word summarizing the message we're to give away. And the word was used five times in those four verses. And it's important enough, let's read it again. I'm sure you caught it, but read it again. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone's in Christ, he's the new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. All this is from God, who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the word to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. The message we are called to give away is the message of reconciliation, a big word, and I want you to understand it because it's the primary message you and I are called to give away as ambassadors. The message of reconciliation is really simple. It's this message. God loves you. God loves all sinners and offers all sinners peace through faith in Jesus Christ. That is the message of reconciliation. Reconciliation is the act of bringing two opposing parties together. So look at me. Opposing parties, sinful man, holy God, bringing them to them together, and the only way you do that is by faith, which results in peace. We are called to communicate that message to people in this world. What is the ministry and message of reconciliation? Let me describe it in several ways. It's the ministry of helping sinners experience what you yourself have experienced. What did you experience? You experience peace with God at a moment in history when you put faith in Jesus. Look, if you would, again, at verse 18. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ. There was a time that you were reconciled. You experienced peace with, with God through faith in Jesus. It's sharing about that moment with others. Sometimes reconciliation is allowing God to make his appeal through us. Like verse 20 says, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through me. You're letting God speak through you about the important message of reconciliation, that people are sinners, God loves them, but through faith in Jesus, you can have peace with God. It sometimes involves imploring others, begging others to be reconciled to God. Like verse 20 says, at the end of it, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. I am God's ambassador. Wherever I go, I'm his authoritative representative. But there's a message I'm called to give wherever I go. That message is reconciliation. Now, how do I practically live this out? You're saying, Pastor, Mark, talk to me practically. How do I live out? How do I share this message of reconciliation? And so I'm going to talk personally for a little bit here. First and foremost, I would say is this, for my own life, we have to realize that God always has us 
on official business wherever we go and wherever and whoever we're around. I seek to live my life the best I can as God's representative. Believing wherever I go, whoever I'm around, I'm on official business as God's representative in that person's life. Wherever I go, God's in sovereign control of it all. Whether I'm in my neighborhood, I'm on vacation, whether I'm out wherever, I'm always on official business. That doesn't mean I'm official. It just means I live with a recognition, God, you're always at work in people's lives. And you want me to represent you in this setting and every setting. And the second thing, it starts with that as a mindset, but then it's very simple to be God's ambassador because five times there is only one message we're called to give away, only one, and it's the message of this. This is how I do it. I love you. I used to be a sinner like you, separated from God. Jesus died for all the sins of the world, and through faith in him, you can have peace with God. That's the message of reconciliation. And I'm telling you, there are thousands and thousands of people who have never heard it because I talk with them all the time. That's called the good news, by the way. And you think people understand that message, but they don't. They get confused and they think it's religion and they get the law and all these things that are mixed. Hey, the good news is so misunderstood and we are called to just make it clear to people. So when I golf, for example, I'm God's ambassador on that golf course, and I really believe that. And for you, if you know me, that is my platform for ministry, for evangelism. Four hours with pagan guys? Are you kidding me? That's like, wow, what a a privilege it is. So let me tell you just a few stories, just a few, just recent stories of conversations I've had with guys. Here's Jerry. Jerry, I discover, is a bartender. Um, This dude was awesome. Actually, this is a different guy. I show up the first tee. I I golf early, like 7 in the morning or even before that. This dude is on the first tee, teeing up. He's got a a cigarette in his mouth. I'm like, I'm going to love hanging with this guy. (laughs) This guy's got a story, and did he ever have a story? But there's this dude named Jerry. He's a bartender. I get to know these guys. They, sometimes they, they have no idea who I am. I'm just loving on him as God's representative. And I find out that, that Jerry, man, he's got a lot of anger in his life and anger at God. And, you know, and I start joking with him. Uh, he finally asked me what I did. I told him I'm the pastor. And, 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 and so you know, he, he made a putt, and I go, Jerry, I just prayed that you'd make that putt. That's why you made that putt. I'm just joking with him, having fun, letting him know I'm a real guy. And then I said to Jerry, I said, you know, Jerry, I really believe God brought me to you today. Because I can tell you got some things, you're angry, but God loves you. And I said, Jerry, you do not need to be afraid of God. God loves you and he cares for you. And he offers you forgiveness through faith in his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. I asked Jerry by the end of our round, I said, Jerry, when's the last time you read the Bible? He said, I've never read the Bible. And I said, I have something for you, Jerry. And I went to the car, and, or actually in my golf bag, I carry these things by the dozen. I just hand it, I go, Jerry, this is God's word. It's called Steps to Peace with God. He goes, I'll never read it. I go, yes, you will. <laughs> I go, because you're getting older. And guess what? Death's going to be knocking at the door. <laughs> and guess what? You need this. Now, you know, I can joke with guys because we've joked for four hours. I have a relationship. They know I love them. If people don't know you love them, don't open your mouth. You got you to earn the right to be God's ambassador. It's just not a title you have. Love people. Joke with them, whatever. But I'm like, Jerry, just put this in your golf bag. I promise you, because I pray for Jerry daily. I don't know if I'm ever going to see the guy again, but he's on my list. And I go, you put this in your golf bag, one day you're going to pick it up and read it because I'm going to pray for that day in your life that you'll wake up and you'll know how much God loves you. That was Jerry. That's just one conversation with Jerry. There's a guy named Ben who was part of that foursome, and I could tell Ben was listening to the whole thing that's going on here. 
So I just said to Ben, I go, Ben, tell me, what's your story, dude? And he's like, well, I pray to the angels. That's what he said to me. I go, Ben, that's great, but guess what? That will not bring you to heaven. The only way you're going to get to heaven is through faith in Jesus Christ. Ben, Jesus loves you. Here, take this. You read this. This is the gospel, the good news. Rob. This guy was uh, between jobs. He was seeking, you could just tell, looking for answers. And, and I, just said to, I just said, Rob, I believe God brought me to you today. This, being us paired up like this, there's a reason for that. Tell people that. You can tell them that. Because you're his ambassador. And so I gave Rob my testimony. Then I, I quoted John 10.10, 10, that Jesus has come that you might have life, you might have it abundantly, and I gave him this little tool. There's many times I've prayed with guys right on the golf course and, and God has prepared them to give their heart to Jesus. And I've done it in bars with guys afterwards. Hey, let's go hang out and not have a drink, but let's go there and talk some more. And I've shared the gospel. It's, it's the message of reconciliation. There's a hunger out there. People are dying to have someone that will just represent God in a loving way and explain clearly, I'm a sinner, everyone knows it, but there's a God who loves me and sent his son Jesus to die for me, and through faith in him, you can have everlasting life. The message of reconciliation can be communicated in hundreds of different ways. It's a lifestyle coupled with the message. Let me give you a few verses like I have on your outlines to share with how you can share these verses in communicating the message of reconciliation. I mean, you could just... Open your Bible and have someone read this. I promise you, it will impact their life. Like Romans 5.1, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, that right there, justified, just as if I've never sinned. As I put faith in Jesus, I have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, have you ever put faith in Jesus? You know, you can be justified, like God can see you just as if you've never sinned, and you can have peace with God. That verse can change someone's life if you would be God's representative to share it. How about John 3.16? We all know this. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes, if you put faith in Jesus, you'll not perish. You won't go to hell, but you'll have eternal life in heaven. Man, I was at a, 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 a bachelor party, and I was on a, a houseboat. It was getting near night. And I just had my Bible out, and... Uh, the father of the groom uh, just sat down next to me, which was like, whoa. And, and I was just reading the Bible, and I just was like, I said, John, I go, have you ever read the Bible before? He goes, no. And I turned to John 3.16, and I said, just read this. Would you just, this is, this is just a great verse. And he read John 3.16, that verse, and I could tell after he was done with it, tears started coming down. The power of God's word. For someone who has never read the Bible, for them to read out loud John 3.16, I said, John, do you want to ask that Jesus to be your Lord and Savior right now? He said, yes. On the back of that houseboat, that man gave his heart to Jesus Christ and is following Jesus today. It's the power of God's word. Um, how about this? 2 Corinthians 5.21, God made him, that's Jesus, who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. That means as pure as Jesus, as holy as Jesus, through faith in him, if you put your faith in Jesus, people don't get that. I'm telling you right now, people do not understand that through faith in Jesus, trust in Jesus, belief in Jesus, I can have eternal life. They're confused about it. They think it's, you gotta come to church, you gotta be a good person. It's all about works, 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 works. They don't get it. And we are called to be the ambassadors, sharing the simple message of the gospel. Here's a little uh, picture, a bridge to life uh, diagram. I think I've got it up there. That You know, you've seen this before. Sinful man, holy God, you get there by crossing the bridge through Jesus Christ. That's how you get to God. It's as simple as that. No bit easier. This is the message of the Bible. <laughs> this is the simplest way to picture the whole Bible. The Bible is about man is a sinner. God is holy. Jesus is the answer. Through faith in him, you can have eternal life. We are called as ambassadors to share that message. That is the core message. Here's a great verse to use. For the wages of sin is death. This is a, a bad news, good news verse. For the wages of sin is death. Everyone gets wages. Well, you know, the payment 
for sin is you die eternally, go to hell. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Put your faith in Jesus, you get the gift, and you get eternal life, you're with God forever. For some people, they don't understand that. You think they understand that, but they do not understand that message. 1 Peter 3.18, for Christ died for sins, that's for me, once for all. The righteous, Jesus, for the unrighteous, that's me, to bring you to God. People don't understand that. We are called to share that simple message with people. That's what we're called to do. Because I'm God's ambassador, I'm his official representative in a foreign country, I'm always on official business, and guess what? I have one job, love people and share with them the simple message of reconciliation. There's hundreds of, hundreds of ways to do it. It's very important that you discover a way that works for you, and you have a tool to share it. Now, if you come to Seminar 401, I'll spend four hours training you how to share the gospel in various ways, how to share the message of reconciliation, and, and there's a lot, lot of ways that, that I do it. It depends on the setting. But the simplest way is I gave you this. Everyone received a copy of Steps to Peace with God. This is written by Billy Graham. It is probably the most used tool in the history of the world, other than the Bible itself, to share the gospel with people. All you need to know is how to read. You just share it with people. Sit down with someone. I used to go to, to the Oakland airport, and my mom would drop me off there. I just spent a couple hours, sit down with someone they can't get anywhere. And I would just say to them, I, do, I didn't know what to say. I just knew I was God's representative and people need Jesus. I would just say, uh, have you heard, after I got to know him a little bit, I go, have you heard of the steps to peace with God? Well, no. I go, do you got a couple minutes? We'd read through it together. Eight out of 10 people would pray to receive Jesus Christ. Eight out of 10 people. That's what I, that's what I have discovered in life. Eight out of 10 people who hear the gospel, who hear it, from someone who can articulate the message of reconciliation clearly, ask Christ to be their Lord and Savior. That's been my experience. Jesus said the fields are ripe and ready for harvest. They, people are ready. They're not ready for religion. They reject religion. But they are ready for Jesus and a relationship with God through faith in Jesus. Who would reject eternal life and a God who loves you? Despite your sin, he loves you. And if you will, with conviction and love, share that like I, and pray for me, I pray for you. It's the most important thing of why God's left us on this planet. So this tool I give to you. Put it in your purse. Put it in your wallet. If you're a guy, do not put it in your purse. Okay, you're still listening. Just wanted to make sure. Keep it on your person and take it out and use it. Sometimes it's just a drive-by Ambassador opportunity, hey, read this later. Other times, sit down with people and share it. Okay, enough of me talking. I'd like you to share some stories. Can you share some stories of how you are learning to share the message of reconciliation while on earth? Talk about that. Okay, because I'm God's ambassador, I'm his official representative wherever I go in this foreign country. And as I represent him, I have a message that God is calling me constantly to share. It's the message of reconciliation, that man is sinful, God is holy. Through faith in Jesus, there can be peace. You can go to heaven. That is the message. Now, the third thing, because I'm God's ambassador, is this. It's so important. I am uniquely empowered by God to share God's message with others while on earth. Now, it's always to a degree, scary to share the message of reconciliation. To a degree. It's kind of like uh, this cartoon. Some of you really feel like this. Big time. As soon as that cartoon comes up. <laughs> Robert, do we have a cartoon? There it is. Look at this guy speaking. I love this. Hello, I, I'm Lamar Lundy. Uh, I'm a volunteer with the prison ministry here to witness to you fellows. I'm kind of new. I'm going to throw up. <laughs> Some of us feel that way, you know, when it comes to this message, Mark. You're, and you're a pastor, and there's a, a degree that's true. But I, I would share with you this. Courage is not the absence of fear. It's the presence of faith. And, and I've learned over time to be more courageous, and I'm still growing in this area. 
But there are three things that help me to be courageous, at least. The first is this, practice. You will not be courageous unless you practice sharing the gospel constantly. If you do this once a year or twice a year, you're, you're going to be fearful all the time. This should be something you're sharing all the time. I don't know if there's a week that goes by that I'm not sharing this message. It's whatever God arranges. So practice is very important. Second, it helps to know what to say. Right now, I have no fear of preaching. You want to know why? Because I know what I'm going to say. No, I'm saying, Holy Spirit, fill me, lead me, give me wisdom. But I've studied. I know exactly how I begin a message, how I you know, build it, how I'm going to conclude it, the stories. I know all of that in my mind because it's important. The message of reconciliation is important. You should have a method. You should have a style. You should have a way. We'll train you with this. I can share with you. Go to Seminar 401 if you're like, I don't have that. Let me train you. Let me, let me have you four hours with you. But if that, you can come up with your own, but you've got to practice, and you've got to know what to say. Hey, that little steps to peace with God is a great way to start. Use that, 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 use that for the next year all the time until it's so ingrained in your mind you memorize the whole thing and you come up with your own method. I don't know. This is important <laughs> that you have a method that it's grounded in the Bible that the Holy Spirit will bless. And then this, it helps when you know God's power is waiting to be unleashed through you when you open your mouth. This is powerful. Go to 2 Corinthians 5.18. Look at this. Verse 18 says this. All this is from God. See this ministry of reconciliation? It's from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ. He has given us this ministry of reconciliation. And then look, if you would, at verse 20. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though we're God, we're making his appeal through us. It's awesome that God speaks through us. It, to me, blows me away. I go, are you kidding me? I get to preach, and God, you will use me as your mouthpiece like right now? I just can't even believe and, it, and it's a supernatural thing to preach. Now, God calls you to that and gifts you, but I need to share with you, I come up here, sometimes God just, his power comes on. And it's the same thing with sharing the gospel with people who are sinners on their way to hell, and you're giving them the words of life. Are you kidding me? Do you not think God will show up and he will empower your spirit like you've never experienced before? Some of you know that power. And it's the most beautiful experience ever to actually be used as God's mouthpiece. He's speaking through you, giving you words to share the message of life with someone who's on their way to hell and their whole eternal existence is transformed because of your words. God is there in that moment. And it's awesome. It's beautiful. But guess what? His power doesn't show up until you open your mouth. You have to go out in faith. And you're scared and your knees are knocking. And then God shows up and his power I guess I've just done this enough to I, where I just go, God, I'm sunk without you. And yet when we go out in faith and we start speaking his word, his power comes on us. And that's the promise of God's word. You see, the power to be God's ambassador comes as we share, not before we share. God's power is activated in us once we begin to share. You're never going to feel the power, until you start sharing and then all of a sudden the power of God's Spirit comes upon you. As soon as you begin to represent Jesus and share the message of reconciliation, God's power is activated within you for the task. God begins to make his appeal through you as you open your mouth. If you never share, if you never open your mouth in faith, beloved, you're not going to experience the power of God on you and you're not going to experience your true identity as his representative. Oh, I mean, that's just what the Bible teaches. Take your Bibles and turn to the book of Jeremiah. Go to the Old Testament. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel. Go to the center of the Bible and go right from the book of Psalms. Go to the book of Jeremiah. And Jeremiah is a guy we can relate to. And here, you know, 
There's some things that God says about Jeremiah, I think he says about us, and how Jeremiah feels, and, and yet what is overriding it all. And God says this in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4, the word of the Lord came to me. <clears throat> Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, God said. That's true with you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Now, we're not appointed a prophet, but we are appointed an ambassador to the nations. And look at Jeremiah. He says, Ah, oh, sovereign Lord, I do not know how to speak. I'm only a child. And some of us are saying that right now. I don't know how to speak. I'm just a child. And there's times we have that response. We come up with our excuses. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I'm only a child. You must go to everyone I send you and say whatever I command you. And we're called to do that today. And it's very narrowly defined in the New Testament. We're called the message of reconciliation. Then God says this, do not be afraid of them. Some of you are, are, there's some fear related to one person or another or whatever, or maybe people in general. God says, don't be afraid. Why? Because I'm with you. I will rescue you, declares the Lord. And then later in chapter 5, and verse uh, 14, God says this to Jeremiah. Jeremiah, I will make your, my words in your mouth a fire. And these people, the wood, it consumes. And this is what God does. He sets your heart and your words on fire with his power as you begin speaking his word, the gospel. Now, closely related to the name God's given us as ambassadors is also a very closely related name, and it's called witnesses. To be God's ambassador is to be God's representative in a foreign country who shares the message of reconciliation. To be God's witness is to be God's representative in a foreign country who shares the message of the gospel by sharing what you've seen, what you know, what you've heard. It's basically the same in its meaning, ambassador, witness. But I say all that to say this. I want you to listen to these verses. And listen to the power that comes upon the person who goes out in faith and says, I'll be that witness. Acts 1.8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my, well, you're going to be my shopper. You're going to go out and be a worker. No, no. God's power is given so we can be his witness, his ambassador to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the ends of the earth. Paul said in Romans 1.16, I'm not ashamed of of the gospel because it is the power of God, the dunamis, from which we get the word dynamite. Power, the gospel is, for the salvation of everyone who believes. And Jesus said in Matthew 28, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. All authority, all power. Go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them. That's the message of reconciliation. And I am with you always to the end of the age. God wants us to know Yes, we are as ambassadors everywhere we go. There's a message, but guess what? When we voice that message, his power comes on us. And it is a supernatural experience. And watch this. Not only can you feel it, the person you're speaking to feels it. And they realize they are in the presence of an ambassador sent by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Holy One, the God of Israel, the God of our lives. And it's a powerful moment for them. We never share the message alone. The Holy Spirit empowers us. Nothing is more precious to God than when we begin to talk about the reason that his son died. And God sends his power on us to be his ambassadors as we open our mouth and we begin talking about the beautiful and precious message of reconciliation. I just finished reading this book. It's called 33. Some of you may have read it. Maybe you haven't. The movie just came out on Friday. I've not seen the movie. 33 is a story, the true story, about 33 miners, 2010, 2,100 feet below the earth, the mine caved in on them. It's an incredible story. They were there for 69 days. The world's attention was on this. I don't want to tell you the whole story, but I want to read a few parts. This first part, once the miners realize something tragic has happened, this is what they describe. They sit and wait in a cloud for several minutes for the air to turn less gravelly. 
As it does, the full size of the obstacle before them becomes apparent. The ramp is blocked. The ramp was the only way in and out of that mine. 21 stories down, 2,100 feet below. And the ramp is blocked from top to bottom and all the way across by a wall of rock. To Luis Urza, it looks like the stone they put over Jesus' tomb. To others, it is a curtain of rock, and to one miner, a guillotine of stone. Only later will the men learn the awesome size of the obstacle before them to be known in a Chilean government report as Mega Block. A huge chunk of the mountain has fallen in a single piece. The miners are like men standing at the bottom of a granted, granted cliff. The rock before them is 550 feet tall. Imagine covering this exit. And it weighs 770,000 tons, twice the weight of the Empire State Building. In terror, these men do what only they could do, and they pray. One man who's not a Christian, his name is Mario, he says, I want to pray. I feel powerless. I feel impotent. Those who want to pray, come and join me. And all of a sudden, everyone comes, 33 miners around him, and he realizes he doesn't know how to pray. And he turns to Jose Enriquez, and he says, Jose, Don Jose, we know you are a Christian man. Do people at your work in your neighborhood know you are a Christian man? Know you are an ambassador? Will they turn to you in times of need? Will you lead us in prayer? Will you? Will you use your voice when this world is being crushed by mounds and heaps of rubble and rock? People are on their way to hell, beloved. Will you pray? Will you be that mouthpiece? From this moment forward, Henriquez will be known as the pastor, the ambassador in that darkness to his fellow miners because as soon as he opens his mouth, he's God's ambassador wherever he goes. He's got a message. And the third part of being an ambassador, you've got to open your mouth. You don't want to spit. You've got to open your mouth. And he begins to talk. And it's clear that he knows how to speak of God and to God. Henriquez drops to his knees and tells the men that they should also do the same because when you pray, you have to, have a, you have to humble yourself before your Creator. And he begins his prayer. We aren't the best men, but Lord, have pity on us. Jesus Christ, our Lord, let us enter the sacred throne of your grace. Consider this moment of difficulty of ours. We are sinners in need of you. Just about everyone who was at the entrance to the refuge, the one thing that survived on inside is on his knees. And they're less and small before God. We want you to make us stronger and help us in this hour of need. There's nothing we can humanly do without your help. We need you to take charge of this situation. Please, Lord, take charge of this. I don't know how, but find a way to feed us. We have sinned, the pastor says. And so the men begin to speak and expiate their various sins. Forgive me for the violence of my voice before my wife and children, says one. Forgive me for abusing the temple of my body with drugs, says another. The men ask to be forgiven for the moments they, will, they had betrayed the women who loved them, for their jealousies and their uncontrolled desires. They ask God to guide their rescuers to the tiny room in the passageway where they are waiting, ready to accept salvation and to begin new lives as better men. For the next 69 days, this man, every day for their little meal time, it was a, a, a teaspoon of tuna, and it started with two cookies, but they would have this Henriquez preach a sermon, lead them in prayer, it all happened. What if he didn't open his voice? Will you be God's man? Will you be God's woman? Will I be that voice? Will I be that ambassador? Yes! That's why we're here. It's one of the names that God has given us. Hmm. The discussion is this, but we're just going to let it linger, and I'm going to wrap this up. Can you share a story? of how you experience God's power while sharing the message of reconciliation. I'd like you to just think about that. 
And on your way home, would you share that with someone when God's power came upon you to share the message? Beloved, this morning, we've looked at this beautiful name God's given us, ambassador. Isn't that a a high and lofty term that God calls us his ambassadors? You are God's ambassador and so am I. So when you wake up tomorrow morning and you look in that mirror, say good morning, Ambassador Mark or Ambassador Jerry or Ambassador Carol. And then say, Lord, help me to represent you today. Help me to share your message of reconciliation in your power to whoever you have arranged for me to have official business with today. What a high honor. What a high privilege to be God's ambassador. Let's pray.